In this question, we are given six different shapes, and each of the shapes have bases. So we need to figure out the area of each of the bases, and then we're going to use that area to find the volume. In part A, we're given a rectangular prism. So the base of a rectangular prism is going to be a rectangle, and the formula for area of a rectangle is simply length times width. If we take a look at our figure here, you can see that our length goes across the front of it. That's going to be 7 inches. So I plug that in for my length. And then my uh, width, we'll just treat that as like the depth of this prism. And that side is going to be 15 inches. So I'm going to do 7 times 15. And that gives us 105. And that's going to be uh, inches squared because it's area. Now to find volume, that's a three-dimensional um, property. So we have to add a third dimension in here, and that's going to be the height. So the height of this prism looks like it's going to be 4 inches, right? It's going straight up like that. So I'm going to say V for volume here, and I'm going to follow this formula that I have up here. So i got to take the area of my base, which was 105 right here, and I'm going to multiply it by our height, like it says, and our height, what we said was 4. So then 105 times 4 is going to be 420, and volume is going to be a cubed unit, so we're going to take inches and cube it. So our volume of this prism is going to be 420 inches cubed, and the area of the base, which was just a rectangle, uh, was 105 inches squared. Part B is super similar to Part A, um, it's just a slightly different figure. Uh, it's still a rectangular prism, but we have different dimensions. The base is still a rectangle, so the area of the base is going to be length times width. And uh, I'm going to plug in those numbers. So the length of this is, uh, well, it might even be a little confusing to look at this, but you know that length times width is going to be uh, one of the sides of the base and then the width is going to be the other side of the base. So it doesn't really matter which one is the length and which one is the width. So I'm going to say we've got 7.3 times 10.5. This is going to give us 76.65. So 76.65 and the unit is going to be feet squared. So the base of this rectangular prism is 76.65 feet uh, squared. Now we're going to take that base and use it to find our volume. So volume is going to be the area of the base, like in this formula. So I'm going to put that down as 76.65, and I multiply it by the height of this prism. So the height it looks like is going up 16.8 feet. So I write that in here, 16.8. Multiply those two together, and I get my answer. That's going to be 1,287.72, uh, and that's going to be feet cubed because it's volume. In part C, we're going to use that same process, except the area of the base is a little bit different because in this particular figure, we have a triangular prism. So the base of this triangular prism isn't going to be a rectangle anymore. It's going to be a triangle. Um, you can see the top of it right here is a triangle. Well, it's going to go down like this, and the base, you can't see as well, but this base is going to be a same triangle, or it's going to be the same triangle as the top. So let's find the area of our base. And because the base, again, is a triangle, we're going to use the formula for a triangle, which is 1 half times the base times height. So um, we use 1 half. And then the base of our triangle is going to be right here. So let me erase this line that I draw. Um, it looks like 11 feet, but I want to confirm that. Yep, 11 feet. So I put that in for the base of my triangle here. And then my height of the triangle, it looks like it's 5 feet. So I write that in. We're going to get 27.5. Again, that's the area of the triangle. So we're going to take our units, which is feet, and square. So 27.5 feet squared is going to be the area of the base, which is a triangle. And now we need to find volume. So all we have to do is take that area of the base, which is 27.5, and multiply it by the height. And that gives us our volume.
So right here you can see that this prism goes from the bottom to the top, 8 feet. So we could take 27.5, multiply by 8. That's going to give us 220 feet. And because it's volume, we're cubing those feet. Okay, So that's that. In part D, uh, we're again going to use the same process. But once again, we have a different base. In this case, we have a base that's a circle. So here's the area of the base, which is pi times the radius squared. And we're going to find that first. Um, so I'm going to keep pi as is, um, and then I just plug in my radius. So the radius is going to be from the center of a circle to the edge. And as you can see, that's going to be 22, and we need to square that. So now, because if we, um, if we use pi to multiply it out, we get this big long decimal since pi is an irrational number. So I'm going to keep pi as is, and all I'm going to do is square 22. That's going to give me 484, and then I write pi after that, along with my units, which was inches, and since it's the area, we're going to square that. So the area of our base, which is a circle in this case, is going to be 484 times pi inches squared. And just like we've been doing for the uh, volume, we take the area of our base, which is 484 in this situation, and we multiply it by the height. So the height of the cylinder is going to be 35 inches. So I plug that in there, and I do this math. It's going to give me 16,940. Again, we have volume, so it's going to be inches cubed. So 16,940 inches cubed is the volume of this cylinder. Part E is where we do um, something a little bit different. Okay. Um, we have a cone, so um, because the cone is coming to a peak, we're going to have to multiply the volume by one-third. Um, you can also divide uh, the area of the base times the height by three. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'll explain more when we get to that. But just like all the other um, parts of this question, we want to find the area of the base first. So we bring back pi times radius squared. And our radius in this case, well, it's not given to us. Um, it looks like from one edge of the circle here all the way to the other edge, that's 14.4, right? Well, we want half of that because this is the diameter. So we're going to take 14.4, and to get half of that, we're going to divide it by 2. That gives us 7.2. So that's going to be the radius. And that means that from the center here to the edge, that right there is just 7.2 feet. Okay, so make sure you 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 make note of that. If you ever given the diameter, cut it in half, and that's going to give you your radius. So I'm going to fill this in. We have pi times our radius, which is 7.2, and that's what we're going to square. So area is going to be 7.2 squared. That's going to be 51.84 pi, and uh, what was it feet? squared. Okay, so that's my area, 51.84 pi feet squared, the area of our base of our cone here. Um, but for volume, we want to take that a area of the base and we multiply it by the height. Um, so we've got area of the base, I'll go ahead and do that, is uh, 51.84 multiplied by our height, which we could see is 13.1. Uh, now, that's what we normally did, um, and this would give us the um, the uh, volume of a cylinder. So imagine if we made this into a cylinder right here, where the top part, it's not a very good picture, but the top part is a, uh, a circle as well. That would be whatever this product is, but we're only given a cone, so you have to multiply by that, I'm sorry, you multiply this by one third, right? That's in our formula right there. So you could do that. You could take 51.84 times 13.1 and multiply that by one third, or that's the same thing as dividing by three. And I kind of like to divide by three. I, I think it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to rewrite my volume here. This is going to be 51.84 um, multiply this by 13. 0.1 in 
like I just said, we're going to divide it by 3 instead. I think that's a little bit easier. So if I do all this math, in the top part, I'm going to get 679.104. Of course, we're still dividing that by 3. And then when I divide that by 3, I'm going to be left with 226.368. And this unit was feet. And because it's volume, we're going to be cubing it. So the volume of this cone here, so let me get rid of all this extra stuff. Uh, the volume of the cone is 226.368 feet cubed. And finally, part F is very similar to part E because it comes to a point. So I'm going to find the area of the base, which is a rectangle. So the length of our base, which is again a rectangle, is 24 centimeters. So I plug that in. That's going to be 24. And then the width, or you could say the depth, I guess, um, is going to be 8. So I plug that in as well. So the area is going to be 24 times 8, which is 192. And that's centimeters squared because it's the area. Now we want to find the volume. So we're going to say volume is the area of the base, which is 192 times the height of the pyramid. So from the center up to this peak, it's 22. And I can multiply this by one third, but like in the last problem, I thought it's a little bit easier to divide by three. Um, that's going to give me the same answer. So in the top part, we're going to be left with 4,224 divided by three. And then when I actually divide that by 3, I'm left with 1,408, and we're going to have cube, uh, I'm sorry, centimeters cubed. And that's going to be the volume of our pyramid.